Hello there. I'm Scotty. You're not. What's that? You're having trouble seeing me? It's too dark in here? Well, then you're right on track with this movie. Hold on. All right. Uh, we are talking about the Nun 2 today. Uh, okay, so a little history with me. Okay. As you may know, when I, back in 2018, I saw the first Nun in a double feature with that horrible Slenderman movie, which I saw first. And it was so bad that I actually thought The Nun was pretty good. But then when I got the Blu-ray, I rewatched it and I went, I thought this was good, you know? And then last year, my son and I went through all the Conjuring movies, except for Curse of La Llorona, which I will still say is part of the Conjuring movies, you know? But, and I, I rewatching it, The Nun was just kind of meh for me. And so I was surprised they were making a sequel because I was like, they connected that one perfectly to The Conjuring. Why are we doing another one? Why? Well, because you see, the first one made money and Follick is one of those characters like Annabelle that is popular, so we're going to do that. But there is such a thing as oversaturation and I think it's... Annabelle had three movies that they just kept on going back to the well. That third one was a setup for spin-offs that we haven't technically greenlit yet. There's a Conjuring 4 coming out that supposedly is supposed to finish things off. So, if that's the case, and I think, you know, the, the post credit scene sets something up that, again, more Valak, but it could be finishing this off and just ending it, you know, But uh, there's other case files from the Warrens they could do. Like they were talking about doing a werewolf one for the longest time and other stuff, but they just haven't. I think they realized that this franchise is at its end. And so this film was made to connect to The Conjuring 4, which will be the connecting final thing. Like it's gonna show like what we haven't seen yet, which is the footage at the beginning of the first one where they exercise my wreath. It's gonna be that case, I guess. As far as I can tell. But this was... Eh, I struggle to know. People say this is an improvement on the first one. I think it's more of the same. You know? Looking down long, long hallways with a flashlight waiting for a... <laughs> to jump out at you and jump scares everywhere and it just... And the story also is confusing to me, okay? So we started the movie with this priest dude who is found by Valak and Valak raises this priest in the air and sets him on fire. And then the lore throughout this movie suggests that that's what Valak has done before. Bullshit. We have never seen Valak do this in any of the other movies she's appeared in. Why are you retconning what Valak's thing? She has never levitated someone in the air and set them on fire before. Yet, this is what she's supposedly supposed to do? Apparently she did this to someone named St. Lucy, who did not burn because she has special abilities. And, of course, Sister Irene is connected to her because we got that familial thing. Or could she be could she be connected with the rain? Who knows? At this point, everything's getting fictionalized anyway, so who knows? Add to that, I didn't think we needed Frenchie in this film. Like, I we well, without Frenchie, there's no film. Exactly, because the ending to the last one set up the Conjuring perfectly. You add this in here, and you you watching this. And, you know, and this, I'm like, what was the point? What's the point? It doesn't matter what they do to stop Valak in this. It's not going to stop Valak completely. Even the end of the film, 
shows, you know, everything is fine, French is back to normal, then Irene gets this look like maybe it's not. No shit it's not. We've seen the other movies. We know Valak's not gone. So I don't know. This is they should have just called this Cash Grab the Movie. Because that's all it is, it's a cash grab. To make money off the name and to keep the Conjuring franchise going, which at this point, uh, the last good movie in the franchise, I, I didn't mind Conjuring 3. I didn't mind it. I thought it was okay. Interesting twist with a human villain there. And Annabelle Comes Home wasn't that bad. Didn't see why it needed to be rated R, because, you know. Even my son, when we watched that, the Annabelle Comes Home, I was like, okay, you just watched it, right? Yeah. Do you see any reason why that should be rated R? He's like, no. It's about a kid. There's no swearing. There's a couple swearing. Bob, Bob has balls. <laughs> it's not swearing, but you know. I don't know. I don't know. But it, it felt like they could have made that PG-13. Why was it rated R? Because of the scary stuff? It wasn't even that scary, to be honest. This... Not only do you have Sister Irene back, and T Taisa Formiga is good, you introduce this other nun who's a black nun in 1950s. Yeah, there was still segregation in the 1950s, so I highly doubt there'd be a black nun. But, you know, we gotta have our quota of people who aren't white in our movie, so we gotta add a black person in because, yeah, it's 2023, so we gotta have our, you know... Our person who's not white in the movie. I'm sorry, it bugs me. And I also don't like this actress. She was also in Missing, which is the movie I have to do. And she has that face. Like, like she's always she's about to cry. You know, she's got hating... You know, She's got the uh, Robert Pattinson face, which looks like she's always about to cry in every picture. Even when she's smiling, she's like one second from a tear bursting out the side of her eye or something. I don't know. It's just, don't care for the actress. And the character overall is not really necessary to the plot of the movie. She just comes along with Sister Irene because she wants to. And while she does help at the end of the film, if you took her out... There'd be nothing added to it. There's nothing taken away from this. There'd be no difference at all. It was just, we need a character who's not white in this movie. Even though, with the era that this takes place in, it would make sense. There would not be any black nuns in 1950s. I'm sorry. There was segregation. It just doesn't make any sense. Segregation was still a thing in the 1950s. It doesn't make any sense to me. Let's move on from that. Bonnie Aarons, for what she gets, is fine. There's a cool shot, which I used as the as the, um, the thumbnail, where you have Valak behind Frenchie, and he's got, like, black blood coming on, you know. And I call him Frenchie, because that's what he was called in the first one. But they're calling him Maurice now, because the twist is gone. We know who he is. We don't have to call him by the stupid nickname anymore, because we know that he's Maurice from The Conjuring. But knowing that that's the same character, it... It doesn't help because just constantly going, okay, we know he's still going to be possessed. And at the end, when they use wine of all fucking things to save him, the blood of Christ, I guess you could call it, then, I don't know what that was, the blood of Christ, quit squeaking, son of a bitch, to, to save him and defeat Valak, you're like, okay, but no, Valak's not gone. And what's this whole quest to find a pair of eyeballs? that Valak wants to use to do something that, I don't know. Also, I didn't see the point of the orphans, orphanage, whatever, and Anna Popwell's character. They're just there so that we can have jump scares throughout the movie. And my God, the kid acting in this is terrible. Like there is one one girl that screams, I think I might be the character of Sophie. She screams and I started laughing because they kept that take in the movie. She's like, ah! I'm like, they th they thought that was a good scream. They thought they thought that that someone said, good, great, print. 
I think this might be a bad director. By the way, this is the same guy who directed Curse of La Llorona and The Conjuring to Death made me do it. I think that The Curse of La Llorona is mediocre as hell. And I thought The Conjuring Death made me do it was just okay. This, this was in between that, I guess. I struggle to even think that it's better than the first one. I just, I feel, I feel like this is an unnecessary film. At the end of the day, it's unnecessary. You could skip this movie, just watching through it, and nothing would learn from this. And even, I don't know how it would connect to the next one. The next one has to be a prequel. The Conjuring 4 has to be a prequel. It's rather called Last Rites instead of Conjuring 4. But, excuse me. But, I don't know. It just, this, this feels like they did it for a cash grab. Not a lot of people went to see this, I don't think. But, it just, it's more of the same. Rinse, repeat, jump scare, bullshit. And, oh, by the way. Something that made me roll my eyes right away and question this movie was at the beginning of the movie when Sister Irene and the other chick, Sister Deborah, Sister Deborah, are talking. Right? She she's just spoken to Frenchie and they're they're on their way to a train or something, and they're talking, and she's talking about what happened in the first film. And then she comes to the, this is where she comes to the realization, oh, that's when it happened because she's been having these nightmares about Valak. So she's like, "What happened? It's inside Frenchie." And I'm like, "No, there's no way you could have figured it out right away. Wouldn't it have made more sense if she's like visiting Frenchie and weird things start to happen? She starts to come to the conclusion throughout the film, and realize that Frenchie is the one that's causing all this. That Frenchie is the one possessed." And that would have more tension to it. But they're like, no, no, the audience already knows that. So we're just going to reveal it. But it, it makes sense to us to already know it because we already know it. But for Sister Irene to figure it out that quick makes no sense. I know she's psychic girl, but still, it still makes no sense. Why not have the tension play out and make it work throughout the film where she's fi slowly figuring out where this is coming from and realizes that it's Maurice. And then at the end, she has to have this standoff with her friend and someone she poss possibly in love with. By the way, Damien Brickier's character is not shown here. I heard that it's. I heard on the, over the internet that he was mentioned as dying between films, but I didn't hear that here. If, if I missed it, let me know. But. There's a four-year gap, so he could have died, but to kill the character off screen is because he actually wouldn't come back. I don't know. Uh, but I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Talk about this movie. This movie did nothing for me at all. And I would have to say when it comes to The Nun 2, it's not worth your time. There's nothing in this that merits a watch. Not at all. It just... Like I said, even if... The, the next one somehow connects to this, you still probably would need to watch this because, you know, it would still be a prequel taking place after the first one, after the first nun, excuse me, and before the first Conjuring, that even if they've referenced these events, it's like, okay, they told you about this in that one, don't need to watch it, you know? And, I don't know, it just... I wasn't excited for this at all anyway, and it, it was just like, I have to review this because you don't have to watch this to review it, so I bought it. Fine, it goes with the rest of the Conjuring movies, and is, okay, I say it's better than La Llorona, because La Llorona was just so meh, right? But it's, it's, it's still nothing to run home about. So, what are your thoughts on The Nun 2? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.